this is my uh, module one and I redesigned it as a series of activities to increase student engagement. So um, rather than having them just read and write about it, uh, they actually are going to do this um, real experience uh, for this module was uh, social media and privacy. And so some of them have never taken the time to actually read the terms of use and privacy policy, uh, which is part of the concepts that we're discussing. So I actually have them do it and time themselves and how much do they understand. And that actually gives them the real experience to then apply to the next activity, which is to um, watch these clips from a documentary. And then after they do that, I have them uh, post in the critical thinking forums in reply to this. But I have them now um, where they can only create five new threads. So the first five people, uh, which does encourage some of them to post early, um, but then it also forces them to talk to each other rather than like 20 individual posts. They automatically have to start engaging um, from their first post. So this is one thread uh, that they did. And then I do jump in uh, sometimes to make comments as along as they go through the deadline um, and then they apply that discussion the critical thinking what they observed and their own experience to a question uh, like this one where Mark Zuckerberg said that the social the new social norm is that people are are more open um, with more people and they have to use the experience they're reading all of that to answer that question um, so hopefully Right. As time goes on, they are interacting with each other. Students are interacting with each other. They're exchanging ideas um, and engaging with the material. So my course is divided into modules and each module takes about three to four weeks. Uh, and it starts with students interacting with the content usually a PDF or um, video links that they have to watch and they apply it uh, to a critical thinking post where they interact with students on forums and then uh, I conference with them using Blackboard Collaborate to talk about the concepts, what they're going to write. Uh, this particular module we conferenced before the draft was due and so um, Students have the outline of what this is and how it's going to work. There's a link to my virtual office here, which opens up in the new Blackboard. Um, students can chat, although I do encourage them to use some kind of audio settings. Uh, at least have um, earphones so that they can hear me and we don't get that weird feedback. Um, but definitely if they have a microphone so that we can talk over the ideas. Um, I also use uh, like the whiteboard function so we can draft out um, information that they have or if they have a working draft then we share that and talk about that. And then um, students do a peer review. And so this is also posted on forums as a reply to their draft uh, which they used Microsoft Word or Google Docs and then they're interacting, students are interacting with each other again, as well as the content. So the black part is uh, the student writer, and then the red part is the student doing the peer review, and they do two peer reviews uh, per module. to highlight this assignment uh, that uses a real life situation uh, and this is somewhere where students can apply the argument researching critical thinking skills that they learn in the class so um, Hawaii currently has uh, two bills a house bill and a senate bill that would prevent employers from uh, requesting, requiring, coercing employees or applicants from giving over their username and password to social media accounts like Facebook. Um, most students are get really engaged in this because it does affect their lives, um, that they are trying to get jobs now or looking into the future 
uh, after college and they don't realize that we don't have a law that prevents this and that there are some businesses that are already starting to do this. So they get really engaged um, and they have two choices. They could present it as um, an academic essay, argument essay, or as testimony, uh, some similar to what they would say or have to write in order to present at a hearing. Um, and so they need to consider, um, use their problem solving and critical thinking skills to how would they convince the governor to either um, pass this bill or veto it again. He vetoed it last year. Uh, so a lot of students are surprised at that too. And so they have to kind of think in terms of, right, what is convincing to the audience? Why might he have vetoed it last year? And then apply what they've researched um, as well as the language of the bill. So primary sources of the bills themselves and uh, bills or laws that have passed in other states and then apply the secondary resources that we used in class uh, from their research from uh, course material to this problem. So for assessment um, I give students back um, these video comments. So I do take their final draft of their essay and make some notes. Um, usually I highlight, so the color coding I explain to them like green is things that mm, maybe you want to rethink and then yellow are things that are more, that have more of a right or wrong answer, spelling, punctuation, things like that. Um, my comments I write in blue so that they can see it um, in between theirs. Uh, I can underline things. Uh, things that I'm talking about, things that are important that they wrote, and then also delete things or cut out things to show them um, where they could be more concise, things like that. Um, and then I talk over it. So I record a Jing video, and Jing is free, which is nice. Uh, and it limits you to about five minutes. So I might record one or two um, on occasion three videos to talk about specific parts of their essay. Um, where they might make changes uh, for the next time around. And the beauty of this really is that it's both the audio and the visual. It mimics uh, like the conferencing. So students have said that, that they feel this feels more like a conference than just stri strictly written comments. And they can hear our tone of voice. And so really it um, it's a little friendlier. And I can express things like um, my questioning that I'm confused here by we do mean Americans. And they then kind of can become part of the conversation in the sense that that then becomes their choice how they want to change that as opposed to straight up written comments where it feels like I'm telling them this is what you should say. So for learner support, um, I try to do this right from the beginning where there's a, I start with this getting started and tell them, you know, about like the embedded calendar um, and also ask them to look at this successful online learning page that I've created. And this is based on my Success Connection workshop where people are considering taking online courses. So I do have the distance ed self-assessment that I think a lot of people have seen. And I follow it up with um, sort of helpful ideas for how they would do this. Some of our students aren't taking online because they like it. They do it because they have to. Um, and so I tell them, if you know you like to talk out ideas, this is something you're going to have to recreate for yourself um, online. So if your instructor has the chat room, um, you could use that. Or they might consider using Skype or Google Hangouts to talk to some of their classmates. Um, this page, um, I've actually given the link to several other online instructors in my area um, so that they can their students will have access to this as well. Uh, and then because I know students really like that sort of interaction feeling, um, I include uh, video recordings like with the librarians. I do this every semester and then I also record my own video tutorials uh, for different assignments or different things the students need to do using the Jing uh, free recording. Mm -hmm.